Powerful performance there. Joining us now is Elizabeth Olson herself. Elizabeth, thanks for joining us here today. Thank you for having Some me. Some deep topics on the show. You're also the executive producer. After the first season ended, what did you feel like needed to still be explored in the second one? Um, for the second season, from what we wanted to put on camera, we really wanted to explore something that was more propulsive um, in the show and these characters. The first season is really like a microscopic understanding um, of grief in the smallest of ways. And in the second season, we really wanted it to be about big action. And so we watch all the characters um, fail <laughs> in a bigger way, <laughs> which is really fun. <laughs> well, also what's interesting is you said your character never really hit rock bottom in the first season, which by the way, your character goes to some yeah. pretty <laughs> dark, deep levels anyway. So is that something you really wanted to explore in the second season, how much lower she could possibly go? Yeah, I thought so. I, I thought she was she was kind of treading and I feel like um, you, I feel like rock bottoms when you when you discover that you hate the person you're becoming, mm. and so I we were playing around with that, and we also got to play our show deals with memory and different perspectives, so we also get to follow Danny's story, who plays my brother-in-law, um, a little bit more specifically this season, which is fun to live in another character's shoes. There's also maybe a sense that your character will never get over the death of your husband, mm. and the grief will continue into perpetuity almost. How do you think the show kind of deals with grief differently than what we've seen before in other shows? Well, the reason why we want it to be a show and not a film is because there is no end to grief. It is something that you continue to live with for the rest of your life. It's just uh, other people think it ends, mm -hmm. <laughs> but right. the person going through it doesn't. And so I, I, what, I, what I like with it being a television show is you continue forward in someone's life and then they continue to be surprised by when it hits. Um, and I feel like that, that has been a response we've had on Facebook with people who have connected with each other. That's, that seems like something that is specific to their experiences as well, that no one understands. It's very isolating. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some relatable parts that people get while they watch this, but what role do you feel like humor plays in this show? Well, I think we need levity. In yes, you have to. And I really feel like Kit Steinkellner, our creator um, and, sh and writer and co-showrunner, um, does a great job with 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 humor, and so did a lot of people, a lot of our writers in our writers' room. So we do constantly try and play with humor, and but is that difficult because the subject matter is just so intense? Maybe a, a delicate balance. I don't know. Balance you have I to think draw. it's fun. Like right. I like trying to make something as absurd as possible that is sad, but hopefully it's absurd enough for people to also laugh and and find humor in it. Because I think the the funniest and saddest things in life are the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is that very true. So you were in LA last night for the premiere of the show. You're here in New York City. You obviously travel a lot. Yeah. You're teaming up with American Express. So what can you tell us about that partnership? Yeah, um, I so I I've always been a big fan of Delta. I'm like a very loyal Delta customer. Um, being able to use my miles for vacation travel or to also like fly someone else out while I'm working on my miles is really important to me. And with um, American Express. They're relaunching their portfolio, Delta and American Express, in 2020, January of 2020. And it's just talking about the new benefits, double the miles for things that I love to do, which is grocery shop. <laughs> you love to grocery shop. Yeah, it's my favorite thing to do in every city I'm in, especially with huh. moving and having to go to a different city to live. I, I love making home so when I'm working somewhere like Atlanta for four months the first thing I do is grocery shop and I have like my specialty stores that I like to go to but anyway for grocery shopping you get double the miles and then for uh, restaurants worldwide you also get double the miles and so for someone like me right. <laughs> it's a pretty great situation. Well, Amex is really amazing by the way in terms of the travel uh, concierge service yeah. that they have as well what sort of travel hacks do you have out there for our viewers Ooh. that are probably watching that are like I want to live and travel the way Elizabeth Olsen does. <laughs> well I really feel like lounge access is yes. super Huge. frustrating when you can't important. get in you're totally. like but I got this business class ticket. Why am I not allowed in the lounge? And they're like, well, because your city doesn't go there. But do you have an American Express card? <laughs> yep, you're in. You're in. <laughs> so we do have to talk about Marvel. Yes. WandaVision you have coming up with Disney Plus, which is very exciting. An opportunity to tell the story, the background of Scarlet Witch, and maybe feed into the broader MCU. Yeah. What story do you hope that viewers gain out of seeing kind of the inside workings of Scarlet Witch on this series? What I hope to come out at the end of it is for people to really understand why she's such a powerful superhero in the entire universe in the comics, because this is our first time getting to use her as a 
as a title character. Mm -hmm. Our first time we get to really explore all everything that goes into her psyche. And um, I think it's really surprising and creative the way we're handling it. We keep hearing that, that it's experimental and different yeah. and maybe a little messed up. Yeah. Why? Why is that? Um, can you give us a little hint as to what I that means? I can't. <laughs> no. They have a picture that's released, I feel like is all the, the hint you, the poster, that, yeah. that we can get mm -hmm. uh, or give. But um, no, I'm like not even allowed to say if, like when I start filming. Uh so like I don't even <laughs> like there's like very few things I can the, say. Yeah, this is probably a good thing as to why I'm not on any Marvel show because I would be spilling the beans like every two seconds. Speaking of Marvel, I, we got to get your take on the the crazy situation that was happening between Sony and Disney regarding Spider Man. I like, know. were you panicking as much as we were about what was happening with that and if Tom Holland was going to stay inside the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I was just confused when someone told me that Spider Man um, is no longer in the MCU. I was. Very, I didn't understand how they could no, just take either. away a character. Yeah. That is so critical. That's embedded and critical, line, yeah. and I didn't get it. And, and so then, hot. And so, like Tom Holland. What I understand <laughs> now is he's doing two Spider Man. Yes. There's so many universes when it comes to just the wow. Spider Verse overall. It's kind of crazy. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. crazy. That's a lot of work. Okay. That is too much work for that young man. <laughs> Tom works. Holland can handle it for sure. But there are also rumors that Scarlet Witch might be the next big villain, Ooh. perhaps are in, the next, in the next Doctor Strange film. Obviously, those rumors well, have not made their way to you. To you but yeah. <laughs> would you be excited to play a villainous character? Well, I, sure. I mean, the thing that's fun about Scarlet Witch is that when I entered or Wanda, when I entered the MCU, it was through being um, a villainized character that ends up going over to the good mm -hmm. side. Um, and so, I, and also in the comic books, because of her um, inability to control her own power, she, she became dangerous in different ways. So I have no idea where people take my, it's not in my control, but yes, I think that would be really cool. I think she, she plays both sides in the comics, and of course she should in the in our franchise. Arguably one of the most powerful characters in the MCU, so yeah. good or bad, we know it's gonna be amazing. Yeah. Elizabeth, thanks so much for your time here today. You That's Elizabeth me. Olsen, everyone. Catch new episodes of Sorry for Your Loss every Tuesday on Facebook Watch. Thanks again.